On the menu today, let's try to devise a new fix for a Commodore 64 color issue, even though I'm colorblind. We better get cooking. Welcome. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Cause the Commodore is keeping up with you. They seem friendly, don't they? Well, hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome to Retro Recipes. I've certainly been keeping up with Commodore, well, Commodore fixes, for about 35 years now. And this video will be of interest to you, whether you're just intrigued by the idiosyncrasies of Commodore Electronics, or if you've performed a permanent Commodore 64 PAL NTSC conversion and ended up with a black and white picture, as some people have reached out to me for help with. Oh, and if you're wondering why you'd even want to convert between PAL and NTSC, actually we went into this in depth in the video about my new VIC2 squared PAL NTSC switcher, a board that lets you flick between those modes on the fly for the best of both worlds. And that whole project was made with the support of PCBWay! Because as we all know, PCBWay stands for Perifractics Commodores are black and white. Are yours? Doesn't it? Feel free to take a look at that video after this one. But in short, PAL has better color accuracy, higher resolution, and more software. But also, NTSC machines run faster, the music sounds different, and might be more familiar and pleasing to you, nostalgically speaking. So when asking which is best, sometimes the answer can be, well, both. But here's the rub. <laughs> Doing so can send you back to the 50s, color-wise. Yeah, so what's going on here? Why is this happening? Well, I've researched this with the help of one stage and the fantastic VIC2 squared beta tester, Stefan. And what we think we've discovered is this. Old CRT screens are a little bit finicky when it comes to getting a color sync. And as part of any PAL NTSC conversion, we basically replace three things. There's the VIC chip, this jumper, and this crystal. The PAL crystal's frequency is, roughly speaking, 17.734475 MHz, roughly speaking, whereas NTSC is 14.31818 MHz. Now in the factory, when Lady Fractic and this lady were assembling the Commodore 64, they'd test the output and make sure it provided good color sync to the PAL TV. If the image came out black and white, there's a component critical to the tuning of the fundamental frequency, which could be adjusted. And that's important because that master clock generates the all-important color subcarrier frequency. That's the thing that the monitor's failing to lock onto. For older revision boards, this was the job of the R27 variable resistor, which looks a bit like a trim pot. For newer board revisions, this was actually achieved via a variable capacitor labeled CT1. And adjusting these could compensate for natural variances in the crystal. Yeah, believe it or not, everything from VIC2 socket quality to VIC chip revision numbers can affect what's known as the parasitic capacitance, and therefore the frequency. Oh, pardon me. So, when we take a PAL 17.7 MHz crystal out and pop in a 14.3 MHz NTSC one, we're essentially taking this nice lady's job at the factory and kind of starting over before shipping it to the customer, which is also you. But if we find our newly NTSC machine fails to then give color to our finicky monitor, we can pretend we're in the factory and adjust the same trim pot thingy. Sometimes that will actually fix everything. But in my case, after installing, well, literally in my case, after installing the VIC2 squared on this older revision machine, my good old Commodore 1084S monitor uh, made by Philips simply can't lock onto the color. What a fuss pot. I thought it was trim pot. Anyway, let's use an oscilloscope to analyze what we call that fundamental frequency. You can see the frequency wave hit. Hey, wait a minute. Babe, that's not what I had in mind. What megahertz? <laughs> Love to watch you leave. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the oscilloscope. And we can see that it's slightly below the 14.31818 megahertz that the monitor expects and demands. But in this case, even cranking the R27 variable resistor trim pot up all the way doesn't get the fuss pot working. Yeah, the resulting frequency is still too low. And really, that's because we're expecting a trim pot that works for Commodore's 35-year-old crystals to work on modern smaller ones from different manufacturers that are likely to have different tuning characteristics. And Commodore just didn't really anticipate us doing that. 
the damn fools. So somehow we need to tune the frequency up a bit further than the dial allows. And our theory is that this little 16 picofarad capacitor labeled C70 can help. You can see how it's laying right between the Vic chip, the trim pot, and the crystal area. Basically, adding capacitance with a capacitor lowers frequency. So if 16 picofarad is lowering too much, well, why don't we try about half of that? If we put a 7 picofarad cap in its place, it should lower it less. This should raise the frequency just enough for the monitor to get a sync. Oh look, puppy practic, I've got a sync. It's a bit small though. But there's one more rub. Not a big one, but my PCB is screwed in, which is usually fine. But also these mini grabbers are fiddly to get off and on. Then there's this extension cable and the PAL NTSC switch is bolted to the case right over the PCB screw that we need to, well, unscrew. Yeah, so I'm going to show you how to replace capacitors like this from the top without having to remove the PCB. Quick disclaimer, this isn't really the right way to do it. Why am I American? Uh, but as it's only one quick mod and Puppy Fractic needs feeding, uh, I'm going to do this the speedy way. This is my Commodore 64, but of course it's up to you how you mod yours. When I next get the whole board out, I can always tidy things up underneath. End of disclaimer. I'm American again. All right, enough talk. Let's get cooking.
So there it is, how to fix Commodore 64 color using a 13 pence capacitor. Makes sense. No, pence. Makes pence. <laughs> hey, you guys, make friends. See what I did there? No. <laughs> pence, sense, friends. Friends. And if you order a VIC-2 squared, you'll find that 7 picofarad capacitor included in your kit, just in case your TV's a trim pot fuss pot too. By the way, don't worry, they love each other really. Now I mentioned I'm colorblind. Actually that's kind of a misleading term. It isn't really a blindness. More that people with protonopia see less red and green than full-sighted people. So color deficient is a better term, so thank you very much. But imagine you load an image in Photoshop, then reduce the red and green by about 50 cent, 50 percent. If you're not colorblind, this is how things would probably look if you were, just as it does to the 8% of men who are. Yeah, for some reason it affects far, far less women than men. And they say men have it easy. And if you do have protonopia like me, well, well hello, firstly, uh, but here's how our photo probably looks to a color sighted person. Ooh, no, no, that's, that's just weird. I prefer it our way. By the way, those color blindness glasses, I've tried them, they don't really do much in my opinion, apart from help people make viral videos with color spelled strangely. Like and subscribe everybody. But seriously though, maybe red green color deficiency is why I love Commodore Basic so much. Ah, the purple screen of life. You know that's blue, not purple, right? The blue screen of life. Well, now that this C64 has been rescued by Perifractic, there's only one thing for it. Let's play Rescue on Perifractalus. Now this mothership's bound toward booster range for Fractalus. Down there is where it gets sticky. The Jaggies have packed the planet with remote control weaponry and suicide saucers. There may even be troops. That's all we know. Now suit up. You're the only ones who can pull this off. Some of those pilots have been down there a long time. Thumbs up, Fly Guys. Go on out and get us a future. Rescue on Fractalus, a dangerous mission behind jaggy lines. You join the elite rescue squadron and pilot your Valkyrie fighter through the craggy landscape of Fractalus. Explore every peak and valley, every canyon searching for stranded space pilots, testing your skill against the dreaded jaggies who have invaded our sector of the galaxy. Land your fighter on Fractalus just long enough to rescue those Ether core pilots from the planet's treacherous and hostile atmosphere. Pilots in range. He's on the approach, and Commander, he looks beat. Oh, he's pounding on the rear airlocks. Well, get him open, kid. You okay? Phew, am I glad to see you. Okay. I knew you guys could bail us out. Pilot has arrived. Oh, I'm low on fuel. What are we going to do? We have to go to the mothership. Boost is firing. Here we go. Oh, we're going to make it to the mothership. All right. Yeah, we've got another mission. Yay! Another one? 
And again, like an Uber. Come on, buddy. I wonder what they're saying in English. Is that English? Oh. <laughs>